Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley Griffin, a Broadway writer, performer, and theater journalist. This is my co-host, Poppy. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to click the subscribe button for more content from your theatrical Hermione Granger. It really helps support my channel and helps me create new content for all of you. So thank you so much. So what's it like to go to a performing arts high school? This is actually a show shirt from the very first show I did at my performing arts high school that is very near and dear to my heart. So there's a lot of different types of performing arts high schools. They're mainly in two camps. There are public performing arts high schools, which mainly exist as magnet schools, which means they're a specialized school within a public school system. So for example, the famous fame school LaGuardia in New York is of that variety. That's the kind of school I went to. I went to the Hamilton Academy of Music in Los Angeles. It's awesome. I love it. The other kind is a private oftentimes boarding school like Interlochen. And those are schools that function like private schools that a lot of times you go away to, you live in dorms, and it's like the private school version. There's no necessarily pluses or minuses to either. The most important thing is the school, the teachers, and the best environment for you personally. The one advantage to a, a sleepaway school or board, the one advantage to a boarding school is if you don't have another kind of performing arts school near you. I was very lucky that I had Hamilton right in my backyard, practically. Bit of a drive, but still. But if you're in an area that you don't have a performing arts high school that you can easily go to, then a boarding school private situation is probably your best option. But really, they function very similarly. I've actually coached a lot of students to get into performing arts schools. I've also served as an auditioner of incoming freshmen at NYU, so I'm familiar on sort of both ends of what the what the schools are like and what they can offer and what the whole process is. But I'm going to focus today on my personal experience as a student at a performing arts school. So like I said, I went to the Hamilton Academy of Music. It's part of LAUSD, which is the Los Angeles Unified School District. It's a magnet school. So you had to separately apply to go to the school and get in. And then you have to audition for all of your classes. The school has changed a bit since I was there. Literally right after my senior year, there were a lot of shakeups in the district. A lot of incredible people that were there when I was there aren't there anymore. So to be perfectly honest, I can't fully attest to exactly what the school is like now. When I was there, it was absolutely the best performing arts school, <laughs> certainly in LA. I'll fight fight anybody for, to say that. Um, but there, are, there are other really great performing arts schools in the Los Angeles area and in California as well. I think Hamilton is the best. So I knew that I wanted to go to Hamilton for a very long time. I worked with um, assistant directors and people in the rep company that I grew up in who went to Hamilton when they were in high school and had wonderful things to say. And so I grew up going to see the shows there and just that was all I wanted was to go to Hamilton. And I'm so thankful that I did. I had a miserable middle school experience. High school personally was a dream for me. And I know that that is absolutely not the case for a lot of people. So the way that it worked for me was you go through the whole application process, which what I don't want to go into that specifically because that's very specific from school to school. Hamilton had a specific application process being part of LAUSD and also being a performing arts high school. For some schools, again, like interlocking, you apply to them like you're applying to a college or a private school. So there's always an audition component and an academic component and all of that, but I don't wanna go into too many specifics because that is very singular to whatever school you happen to be applying to. And so you wanna look into what those requirements are. 
Long story short, I got in. It was one of the best days of my life. It was phenomenal. And once you get in, you then have to start the process of auditioning for and choosing your classes, which auditioning for your classes is a whole other thing than getting into the school. The way that that worked at Hamilton was on student orientation day, which all schools have a student orientation day, but in non-performing art schools, it usually is just you come, you get your ID photo taken, you maybe get handed a class schedule based on the classes that you have to take as a freshman. And that's pretty much it. It was much more involved at Hamilton. We did the ID photo, we did all the basic things, but you had to go and audition for every department that you were interested in taking classes in. At Hamilton, they had, when I was there, they had the, the, the choices of areas that you could major in, in terms of the performing arts were musical theater. They're actually one of the only performing arts high schools where musical theater is its own major. A lot of schools kind of only have singing, acting, and dance. They still do musicals, but you can't major in musical theater. So at Hamilton, you could major in musical theater, drama, voice, which included classical voice and jazz, orchestral. So if you played an instrument, you could major in the instrument that you played. We also had a technical theater department. We had an electronic music department. We had a dance department that was more on the modern contemporary side than classical. And I believe that was everything, which which is a wide variety of options of majors and honestly is way more options than most performing arts schools have. In order to graduate with the certificate that you had graduated from your major within the school, there were certain requirements. So in that in that sense, it actually was really good preparation for college where you are not only having to meet academic requirements to get your diploma, you have to meet performing arts requirements in order to have successfully completed your major in that area. It is possible to do more than one. So my official major was musical theater, but I also completed the requirements to have majored in drama and voice, but you could only pick one certificate to get with your diploma. So officially musical theater is what I have my diploma in from Hamilton. So within those majors, there are a myriad of different classes that you can take. Some of those classes are sort of, for lack of a better description, equivalent classes in terms of difficulty, but about different things. Some of the classes were a progression that you sort of go up. So for example, in the voice department, voice one was like the most basic beginning. Here's where we're going to learn to read sheet music and sight sing and learn all of those basic things. And then you could sort of progress up through the choirs. Concert choir was sort of the biggest choir. It was the first choir that most people went into. And then there was Women's Ensemble was an all-female choir. And then the most elite ones that you could be in were chamber singers, which was the most elite sort of on the classical end, and vocal jazz, which was the most elite on the jazz end. And our vocal jazz, our vocal jazz group won the Downbeat Award like so many years. They like weren't allowed to compete anymore. Hamilton's vocal jazz department and just jazz in general, it's really on point. So that, it's sort of like that for all of the majors that you can have at the school. So orientation day, you basically figured out all the classes that you were interested in taking in the different departments. And then you had to go and audition in all of those different departments. So on my day of orientation, I went and auditioned at the dance department, the drama department, the voice department, and the musical theater department. For dance, that was going in, they would set some choreography, they'd have you do some basic things across the floor, and they would determine your level based on that. Voice and musical theater were kind of combined, so you were asked to come in with a monologue and a song. Depending on what they felt they needed, they would test your range, which is something they did with me, um, and they would also ask you what your sight singing level was. That's one place that I, I feel like I made a mistake. I'm good at music theory. I'm really good at it now. Was not super confident in it back then, especially because I knew I was walking into a situation where people were 
extraordinary with their level of music theory. Our school was one of the only schools that offered AP music theory as an option. And a lot of students graduated with a five on their AP level <laughs> music theory. So it was no joke. So I was, I was really scared. And I was scared that if I went in and honestly was honest that, yeah, I actually have pretty good experience with music theory, that they were suddenly going to hand me something very difficult to sight sing. And I was going to be embarrassed. And so I got scared and I said, I do have some music theory, but I feel like I'm not as advanced as most people here. And I sort of downplayed what I could do. And so because of that, I was put for voice in, as they should have, in a level where they really teach that stuff. And looking back on it, it probably wasn't a class that I needed, but I got really scared <laughs> and I downplayed what my ability level was. So I did that with musical theater. Um, for drama, I think I went and just did a monologue, but it was it was a long day. It was like a 12 hour long day. So then the way that schedules work at the school is every every student has seven class periods per day. School started at, I think like some weird time, like 7, 13 AM and technically classes finished. I remember this very vividly at 4, 16 PM. And we had a little nutrition break and we had a lunch break. So you had the academic classes that you had to take. And side note, one of the other great things about Hamilton was how academically rigorous they were. They offered more AP classes than almost any other school at LAUSD. They had great AP classes, great teachers. And everybody was actually very academically oriented and really focused, partially because I think part of it was everybody was coming to school every day with something they were very passionate about doing and very excited and that bled into all the other areas. And some of it is that there were academic requirements. If your GPA fell below a certain point, you were not allowed to be in any shows. So honestly, there were like so many people in my class that qualified for valedictorian, I think they had to like pick the person out of a hat because there were so many people that got really good grades and were really focused on that and graduated with a bunch of APs. So that was great. So basically you also come in with what academic level you're at with certain things. So I actually went into French two instead of French one, because I had some previous experience with French, but you, at your orientation, you sort of go through with the assistant principal, what your level is at everything. And then that combined with what classes you were accepted to, <laughs> sorry, um, determines your schedule. And then your schedule is sort of <laughs> the starting point to start negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> as it were. Basically, every year you had to take either four or five academic classes to qualify to be on track for graduation, which meant you were left with slots for two or three performing classes during the day. And certain performing classes met at certain times. So for example, if you got into the musical, the musical was called musical theater production, and it was always seventh period. So that's when that was. If you got into the drama production, that was always sixth period. So you kind of had to juggle your schedule around what performing classes you got in. And sometimes you had to make a choice. You know, sometimes you got into an advanced choir and musical theater production and drama production, and you only had room in your schedule for two performing classes. And so you had to make a choice. So my freshman year, my academic classes were I took French, I took geometry. I took English and I was advanced in English. So I actually like jumped a year in English, which will come into play in a minute. Took English. I had world history. And then my performance classes were, I took a, like a vocal theory class. I got into musical theater workshop, which was one level below musical theater production. And usually freshmen did not get into the musical. It was a very rare thing for freshmen to get into a musical. Um, so musical theater workshop was actually mainly seniors, but some other youngins who they felt qualified for that class would be there. And you also had a performance presentation at the end of the year. And I did dance and ended up transferring into an advanced drama class. I ended up finding that the dance department was much more sort of modern based than what I felt 
I was really needing to focus on. And especially since your class periods for performing classes are somewhat limited, you have to sort of be selective. What I and a lot of my classmates did was after school, we would go and take professional dance classes. So after school, we would be driving and go take class on the weekends, we would go and take class. So I ended up getting most of my dance classes outside of Hamilton. So that was my first year. It was great. The nice thing about the way that schedules sort of line up in terms of, you know, you you always have to have these periods free for these performing classes, which means you kind of have to juggle where your academic classes lie with what level you're in and teacher and whatnot. So it means you end up having a lot of your academic classes with your fellow performers as well, which is really, really fun. And it's also the time when you get to sort of meet and hang out with people that are in different departments, um, people that are instrumentalists or in technical theater or doing something different. That's sort of how you all get to know each other, which is great. And Hamilton actually, I actually think that Hamilton did a better job of sort of crossing departments, even than some colleges that I'm familiar with did, in that the people that were advanced in the orchestra would be the people playing in the pit for the musicals. And there would be collaborations between different departments that was great. I remember one year, one semester during our lunch break, a bunch of us decided that we wanted to do a concert version of Les Mis. <laughs> and so we got a bunch of the performers, we got a bunch of the musicians, we got people that were interested in directing, and we like put together a full on concert of Les Mis. So one of the things I love about a performing arts school is you're with other people who really love doing what you love doing. And it's special and it's not to be taken lightly. It's just the greatest gift. And a lot of people I went to school with, I'm still friends with, we still work together. It's actually very frequent that I will walk into a new Broadway show and somebody that I went to Hamilton with is playing in the pit. These people will continue with you th throughout your career. One of the things I also really loved about Hamilton, I think this is true for a lot of performing arts high schools. I can't definitively say it is for all of them, but in terms of competition, there was a healthy and supportive competition. And honestly, usually that kind of just came around like once a semester, because once at the end of the semester, there would be auditions for all the shows for the following semester. And so for those like four days, because at least for the musical, what would usually happen is there'd be an, an initial vocal audition where you would decide what role you wanted to audition for. You'd be given um, material and you'd prepare it. You'd come in, there'd be, it was like a professional audition. There'd be an accompanist, you'd come in and sing it. The next day, there would be a big dance audition. And then usually that Saturday is when they would do callbacks for the principals. And you'd be there like all day doing callbacks. And then either at the end of that day or Sunday, they would post the cast list. So I kind of found that for those sort of four days, there was a healthy competition. Everybody you went to school with, you knew you were all going up for the show. There was no meanness. There was no bitterness. No one was ever sabotaging anyone. There was competition, but I found it to be very supportive. And I also, at least personally, found that sort of once that cast list went up, that was it. You were all teammates now, and any competition went out the window. And I found that everybody's sort of un unique strengths were really celebrated. And yeah, there would be times when maybe like, oh, I really wish I'd gotten that role. But it didn't translate to any bullying, to anybody being mean to each other, um, to any viciousness, to any sort of social dynamics, like we were friends. We were friends first and foremost, and then healthy competition. And then the chips fell where they may, and we were gonna bolster each other and support each other. And a lot of times people really did. If there was somebody that was a great dancer and somebody else got a role that was maybe a little bit more dancey than they were used to, people would help them, like sincerely wanting to support them and wanting to make the show the best that it could be. We also had an incredible head of our musical theater department. He was also the head of the vocal jazz program and the piano department for a long time named Richard Schreyer. I will sing his praises till the day I die. He was amazing and his spirit was a big reason why the school was the way it was. He fostered a supportive environment. He fostered an environment where we were treated like professionals. And the idea was, I absolutely believe that you are at the level of professionals and you have the ability to do this just like people on Broadway and that's how I'm gonna treat you. And because of that, we really rose to the occasion. He also really 
emphasize the importance of musical theater history. So like when they announced what the next show was going to be, every student went out, got every version of the script, every film that had been done, every soundtrack, researched it. When we were rehearsing it, we learned who the writers were, why the show had been written, what the history of the show was. We were quizzed in a fun way, like on day one about what every word in the script meant. So if we were doing a period show, like good news, and we got to a 1920s-ism, he'd call out, hey, so-and-so, what does this mean? And we had to learn what everything meant. And so it really fostered a value for the material. And that's something that I think has held us all in very good stead to this day. Sorry, we lost Poppy there. So that was pretty much my freshman year at Hamilton. It was wonderful. I had a, a great time. Sophomore year and junior year were more, I had to take five academic classes and two performing classes, which can get tricky. And I think one of the biggest frustrations is there's always more performing classes that you sort of want to take. A lot of people in musical theater were also involved in the piano department, you know, learning piano, learning music theory was a really big thing. And so you sort of, you know, go through your time and most people really sort of plan ahead about, you know, what academics they're planning on taking, which teachers they really want to study with, which classes they really want to do. And then on top of this, obviously you're auditioning for the performances. And Hamilton did two full-length musicals a year and two full-length dramas a year. In addition to that, there were a lot of orchestral concerts, vocal concerts, meaning more like choir concerts, there were some special evenings where students could come and audition and bring whatever they sort of wanted to do, whether it be sing a song or do an instrumental thing. And they would pick a selection of students who got to perform in a gala night. There were sort of special event things. Musical theater workshop would do a performance every semester. When I did musical theater performance my freshman year, and we did sort of a collection of musical theater scenes and songs. But then in later years, they would do full on like mini productions of things as well. I will say I have never worked harder than I did when I was at Hamilton. Anything else I experienced, including college, honestly, was a walk in the park <laughs> after Hamilton. Just because you're doing four to five very serious academics. I mean, I think my junior year, I was doing five academics, three or four of them were AP classes. I was also in the musical theater production and a choir and doing other things in addition. And there's just not enough hours in the day. And these, like I said, the academic classes were at a very, very high level. So I would get up at like six in the morning, every morning, be studying for tests in the car on the way to school, jump into academic classes. Every academic class would have like an hour of homework a night and then studying for tests on top of it. And then you would have to do preparations for your performance classes. You know, if you're in the musical, you had to, you know, learn all your choreography and learn all your lines and learn all your harmonies and do all of that. And that's when I got really efficient at utilizing any time that I had. I would be doing homework on breaks and during lunch. That's not to say we didn't have fun and we didn't hang out and socialization was certainly a big thing, but doing homework in the car on the way home. I remember during tech week, I where, you know, it was all, all day doing tech in the theater. I would you know, bring all of my books and I would sort of hunker down in the dressing room and I would be studying and I would be writing essays and I would be doing homework literally every second that I wasn't on stage. And then, so when you're in the musical, technically seventh period, like I said, ends at 416. And at the beginning of the school year, you would get out at 416. Pretty quickly, musical theater rehearsals would be going till 545 every day, which means school was not over for you until 545, which means then it takes 40 minutes, however long, to drive home. It's now into like six o'clock. You have to try to eat dinner and then you have to sit down and do however many hours of homework and then try to sleep. And some of the kids that went to Hamilton, you know, every the thing was everybody wanted to be there so much and people made such huge sacrifices to be at the school. Some kids drove hours and took the bus hours from where they lived and they weren't getting home until like 10, 11 o'clock at night on days when they were getting out at like 545. And then once rehearsals started expanding 
And especially when you started getting into tech, rehearsals would be going to like 9, 10 at night, and then you'd be going home and then you'd have to be doing all of your homework and you'd be rehearsing all weekend. So the nice thing was everybody was very passionate about it. Everybody wanted to be there. Everybody was so joyful about what they were doing, but it's a lot of work and it's no joke. It does prepare you really well. I mean, when I got to college and I was taking, even at my biggest stretch, when I was taking like more units per semester than I was supposed to, and I went to NYU, so you do studio three days a week, and that's like all day, all of your performing classes. And then you're doing like three academic classes on top of that. I was like, what? This academic class only meets twice a week and it's only for two hours? This is a walk in the park. I even remember when I got to college, I would get my syllabus for all of my academic classes on the first day. And I would use like the first week or two of school and I would write all of my essays for the entire semester and just like get it all out of the way. And personally, I found the academic classes at Hamilton way more challenging than most of the academic classes at any college that I attended. I also felt not just prepared, but, and I mean this in a positive way, like over-prepared going to college. And when I went to Boston Conservatory, I walked in and like tested out of music theory and I tested out of piano. And it was actually sort of a frustration of, and one of the ways that I sort of wish some schools would up their game a little bit, because I know that there are some people that go to performing arts colleges that are coming from maybe a small town and they have a lot of natural talent. And this is their first opportunity to study that. And that's great. And obviously everybody needs to be taken care of at the exact level that they're at. But there were also a lot of people that went to college that had been professional performers, had gone to a performing arts high school, and were sort of like, we covered all this freshman year of high school. It prepares you. It not only prepares you, I wouldn't just say it prepares you for college, it prepares you to be a professional performer. You will never work that hard. Even when you're like in the industry, working on a show and have like three day jobs, I've still never been as crazed as I was in high school and had to balance my time. And people today ask me how I get so much stuff done. I'm like, still not as bad as when I, when I was in Hamilton. So, I mean, that's sort of how it goes. And in terms of academics, it functions, you know, like sort of any high school, you have certain academic requirements to graduate. Within that, there is a certain flexibility. One of the things I was really grateful for is our, so our campus was home to several magnet schools. So there, we each had an, assistant principal who really functioned as the principal of our magnet school. So our assistant principal, who was really the principal in charge of the performing arts high school was Jeff Kaufman. And this man is one of the most, like the epitome of like that Mr. Holland's Opus kind of teacher. That was Jeff Kaufman. He is one of the greatest, greatest people that I've ever known. And he really cared about all of his students very, very deeply. And he would help you if you needed a little bit of flexibility with figuring out some things in your schedule. Like one of the things he did for me that I will always be grateful for is, like I said, I was very advanced in English. So I did ninth grade honors English, and then I was allowed to skip 10th grade English. And so my junior year, I went directly into 11th grade AP English is one of the reasons why most of my close friends at Hamilton were actually a year older than me. I spent most of my time with a lot of the students that were a year older than me. So my sophomore year, I did junior AP English. My junior year, I did senior AP English. And theoretically, when I came in, you only needed three years of English to graduate. So I was thinking, great, I can then continue my English studies on my own. I can do another performing class or whatnot. So my senior year... Mr. Kaufman calls me into his office and said, hey, so there's been a change in something and technically you have to have four years of English. And I'm like, does that mean that as a senior, I have to go back and do sophomore English? And he's like, well, I don't, I don't think anybody really wants you to have to do that. And so what he did was he created an independent study class for me. And so I got to do an independent study Shakespeare class that was sponsored by the drama teacher. So every day, my senior year, first semester, I got to go in the drama room and do an independent study Shakespeare class. And he put it in the computer in such a way that it counted for my English credit. And my senior year, I actually did two independent studies because I um, one summer I went and I did some classes through UCLA Extension because it was not necessarily the biggest fan of a couple academic teachers. And so I got those credits out of the way through UCLA. And so I had an extra um, class. 
So I had two independent studies my senior year, both were sponsored by the drama teacher, Miss C. Yay, shout out to Miss C. And one was Shakespeare and one was playwriting. And that's actually ultimately how I was able to have my very first play professionally produced at 17 was for an entire year. I had an independent study playwriting class where I went and I wrote a play and I was mentored and the play ended up being pretty decent and a theater company decided independently, had nothing to do with um, Hamilton, independently a theater company decided that they wanted to produce it. And so I had my first play produced the summer after I graduated from high school. The people that were there really cared about us and they really cared about our unique needs and giving us the skills that we needed both as human beings and as performers and they were aware that you know not everybody was going to grow up to be a performer but a lot or, or an artist not everybody there was a performer obviously but a lot of people did you know a, a lot of people who went through Hamilton are professional artists now like significantly working in the industry but there's other people obviously who didn't but they still loved their time at Hamilton and one of the things I actually thought was really interesting were there were a couple students that I was there with who were wonderful wonderful performers they had no intention of being professional performers they had other goals and a couple of them graduated completely succeeded in their goals like got into their dream school all of that and realized that performing was way more a part of them than they realized and ended up switching their careers. And now they're Broadway performers. But that's because of the kind of care that the teachers gave to us. I mean, to the level of if you were having trouble with certain harmonies, a teacher would be like, great, come in and see me at lunch and we'll work on it. And you know, I'm really nervous about this audition thing coming up. Great, come in and, and we'll work on it. it there, there was great care combined with treating us like adults and like professionals. We weren't coddled. We weren't treated as children in the best way we were treated as professionals. And it made all of us rise to that occasion. And I think that it's absolutely the best way to teach of coming with that respect for somebody as an equal collaborative artist. Uh, the other thing that Mr. Schreyer specifically did that I really respected is Clearly, all the teachers knew us really well. We'd done a lot of shows. We were in their classes. And he had a policy that he treated auditions. He judged auditions based on what you did in the audition, not on other things he knew about you as a performer, per se. So if you were the star of the school and you'd done a bunch of leads and everybody knew how amazing you were and you came in and you bombed your audition and then like maybe they gave you a callback and then like just bombed your callback. He would treat it as a professional audition. And he'd go with the person who did the best audition. And that was a really good learning experience, I think, for everybody that, you know, you all started at a base level when you came into audition. There wasn't favoritism and things going on, at least when I was there. So, you know, you might be jealous that you wish that you'd gotten a role or sad that you didn't get a role. But it was, I at least felt it was very much like a, oh God, I wish I'd gotten that. It was never, they didn't deserve it. I mean, even if, if somebody felt like maybe they deserved a little bit more, it was never like a, oh, that was favoritism or they're completely untalented and they shouldn't. It really was, no, well, everybody here is really good. And I really would have liked to have gotten it, but I'm really happy for them. And they're going to be a different choice, but they're going to be great. And that was something kind of magical and very special and unique that I really loved. And all of the teachers kind of talked to each other Everybody took classes in different departments. So it was very integrated in terms of that. And we learned all elements. You know, we, even if you never took a technical theater class, your fellow students were. And so you learned about those things. Everybody learned how to put a mic pack on. And they also partnered with Broadway shows in terms of costumes and sets. A lot of Broadway shows, once they've closed, will store their costumes and sets and sometimes they'll rent them out for regional productions. A lot of the sets and costumes that we had for our shows were rented from the actual Broadway productions. And so when the set came in, all the technical theater students ha had to learn how to adapt it for the space. We also had an incredible state-of-the-art theater that was incredible. But when we got our costumes and did our costume parade and you know all the costumes were fitted to us, they had names of Broadway performers in the back of them. And it just, it it lent a real weight and responsibility to what we were doing. 
And again, with being treated like professionals, we were treated like professionals. If you did not make your call times, if you ever missed a show or were late for a show, like you were banned from being in a production for a year. And that happened and it happened to people that were star students. So there was a really wonderful work ethic that was really instilled in us. And I think there was a really great camaraderie. So how is a performing arts high school different? I mean, on the simplest level, you are doing performing arts classes mixed into your day along with your academics. And I also have to say that can be a godsend because we all have those classes that, you know, are not our favorite. I am not a math person <laughs> at all. And I can't tell you what it did for my mental health to like, you know, maybe I'd go to a couple academic classes that weren't my strong suit and then I'd go and do choir. And it was like a breath of fresh air reset. I feel like I'm in my element and my comfort zone and I could sort of go and face the rest of the day feeling better. And then I'd do a couple more classes and then, you know, you'd have rehearsal for something. It allowed everybody to have strengths. It allowed the things that you were good at and passionate about to be valued equally with everything else. But the other differences I think for performing arts high school is they tend to attract very motivated students, passionate students, and students who have strong goals for what they want for their future. And like I said, those can change and be flexible. But if you're somebody who's passionate about something and has really strong goals, then even when those start to change, you're still going to be passionate and have strong goals. And so I found myself surrounded by a lot of very smart students, a lot of very passionate students, a lot of supportive students, people that I really learned a lot from, as opposed to a bunch of random people thrown together in a school who all had to be there because we all have to be there because you're of a certain age and you have to go to high school. And I think that that was a saving grace from a lot of things that can be frustrations with high school experiences. You know, the the social element was different. Like I said, we were all a bunch of like-minded people. And I mean that in terms of our passion. It was a very diverse environment. Every kind of person that you can imagine was represented at our school. I think actually white students were in the minority. So the socialization was also in service of, we're also teammates and we're also doing all this other stuff. And so sort of like who was dating who and things like that weren't, they weren't the center of our universe. And what somebody was wearing was not the center of our universe and all that. Actually, fun, fun side anecdote. When we started getting into tech for the musicals, things got really exhausting. And actually, the um, the the big the big fashion, which is so delightful, is right around tech time. We'd get our show shirts for the musical, and so we'd all wear our show shirts. And because we were dancing a lot in character shoes, many hours a day. Our feet were always kind of hurting. We were always kind of sore. And so the fashion when I was there that started was everybody would go and get like really cute pajama bottoms from somewhere, like just really cute pajama bottoms. And you'd come to school either with your show shirt or like a nice top, your pajama bottoms and the biggest, fluffiest slippers that you could find. And you always knew who was in the musical by who in Tech Week was showing up in that and it was lovely and adorable and it gave our feet a little bit of a respite. Yeah, there there were challenges and there's the usual high school things that always go on and there's drama that goes on. But I remember everybody being ultimately very supportive, learning from everyone, people that are still in my life to this day and learning so much and working so hard and just being so full of joy that I got to do what I love every day. And it's something that I highly recommend. And in all honesty, I would recommend it to people who maybe aren't even necessarily into the arts in terms of wanting it to be a profession. Because going to a performing arts high school in some ways is kind of not 100% dissimilar to the way schools used to be when arts were like an active part of them. So, I mean, there were some people that never got in a production of a musical that never got in a production of a drama. I mean, they knew how many people they needed and it was competitive and they didn't let people in just to let people in. And so there were some people, some people happily, who spent all four years just sort of going to like learning an instrument and going through the basics of learning an instrument and doing those requirements. And they went on to not have careers in the arts, but they got a great musical education and it was 
a break in their day. They got to go play the oboe or play the piano or take some dance classes for their PE requirement. That was the other nice thing is if you were in a dance class or one of the advanced musical theater classes, that counted for your physical education for your PE requirement. And it should have. We were working with like original Fosse dancers. This was no joke, but it left an extra period in our day that we could be doing something else as well. Yeah. If you're, if you're not somebody who wants to go into the arts as a career, I still would maybe think about it because it's a great way to get a phenomenal extracurricular education and to be around a lot of other students that are passionate and motivated and have a strong focus in their life that's more than the social drama, so to speak. And I really value about Hamilton that they really made us learn all the aspects of what we were doing. You know, music theory was valued and technique was valued and knowing theater history was valued and respect for each other and professionalism was valued. Those shows that we did, I just remember being filled with so much joy and they were really good shows. I'm very proud of the work that we did. And it was in every department. I mean, they had an electronic music department where that's what you could major in with amazing equipment and incredible choirs that won amazing competitions. I will say that Hamilton, at least when I was there, was not super into the drama competition circuit that I know a lot of high schools do. We weren't a part of the Jimmy Awards. We weren't a part of going to a bunch of competitions. The vocal and instrumental departments did a lot of competitions, but the musical theater and drama and dance departments really didn't. The one exception, here's a, here's a funny anecdote. I'll, I'll give you the short version of it. My drama teacher one day was like, you know, all these other schools are going to these like drama competitions and we're the performing arts high school and we're not, so we should go. So I signed us up for this competition. It's a Shakespeare competition. And she came up to me and this other student, Mark, and she's like, you are my two Shakespeare people. You really love Shakespeare. I'm going to enter you. Prepare a monologue in a scene and we'll go. And so we did and we prepared and we went. It was interesting because there were a lot of schools there who their entire performing focus and their entire budget for the year was on going to these competitions. So like here, Mark and I come dressed like, you know, in all in our actor black with our like, you know, things that we prepared for a week. And there were some schools there with like 30 students with fully built sets with these elaborate costumes. And we were like, oh man, like, I don't know what we're doing here. And no one would talk to us because we were like the new school that was there. And we all just kind of thought it was hilarious, but we went and we did our performance. We did our scene first and the scenes were being judged by a different panel than the monologues were being judged by. And a lot of the monologues were being judged by people like from the RSC. So this was, we were nervous. We did the scene. We were one of the first people to do a scene. And right afterward, the head of the entire competition comes out and basically gives this passive aggressive speech about how it's unprofessional to show up to a competition wearing all black. And we were like, great. We shouldn't have come to this. So then we went and we did our monologues. And at the end of the competition, Mark won for best male performance for the whole competition. And I won for best overall performance. And we were stunned. And as we walked out, people were kind of like, it felt like a scene out of a horror movie. Like other schools were kind of following us at a distance. And our teacher was like, get in the car, get in the car. <laughs> they, they were not happy that the newbies did this. I don't think the school ever entered that competition again. And I remember calling my mom because our teacher had driven us to the competition. And my mom was like, oh, how'd it go? And I'm like, I think, well, I won. And she was like, oh, what did you win? I'm like, the, the whole thing, I think. What I feel like that epitomizes about the school is that there was joy and pride in our work, but there wasn't cattiness about the other elements of it. And there wasn't a negative competition feeling about it. There was never an instance where you got a part that somebody else wanted and they like stopped talking to you. Like that would never have happened, which I really value. And it's not the way it always works in the professional world. And it was a time of just doing what you do for the absolute joy and love of it when there was no other reason, you know, you weren't in need of a paycheck. You weren't doing this because you just needed a gig. And it was wonderful. It was, it was wonderful. And I really highly recommend it. Now, like I said, it's different depending on the different schools. At LaGuardia, you know, it's, you're a vocal major and it's very much about classical 
music. And then there's the dance department and then there's the acting department. And it works a little bit differently. The auditions are a little bit different. The way the classes work a little different. You still have academics mixed with performing classes, but I think it's great. I really recommend it. I will also say that our teacher, Mr. Schreyer, was not that into contemporary musicals. He really had a great value of golden age musicals. So I think like they did Into the Woods before my time. It was it was way before I was at the school. When I was there, we did Sweet Charity, but I think those were like the most modern musicals that we did while I was there. But it caused us to learn about a great history. I mean, like, I know everything about good news and I love the show. And it also allowed us to, you know, ask questions about how musicals were written, what's still relevant today. The show is very special to me. It's the first show that I got to do on the Hamilton stage that I'd been I'd been wanting to perform on since I was very little. And I'm so fortunate that I was able to be a part of so many productions there in so many different departments, but especially in the musical theater department. And I still remember all the choreography and all the staging to all of our shows. And there's probably Hamilton people watching this that are rolling their eyes and laughing at me. But it was it was very special. And I also was going through a lot of very difficult things in my personal life. And Hamilton was such a saving grace. It was such a saving grace to go somewhere that was supportive and where I was happy and got to do what I love to do. So that's all to say, I highly recommend performing arts high schools. You want to go to one that is the right fit for you. Even Hamilton, as I said, it's changed an enormous amount since I was there. I don't know if I, I don't know what kind of recommendation I can give it now. I don't even know if I can be like, yeah, go to Hamilton. I, which is really sad that I feel like I, I don't know if I can say that or not. But if there's a performing arts school that you have access to that you've gone to check out and go and check it out. Um, there, there should be days that you can go on tours and things. I did a tour of Hamilton and everybody was great. And I got to go and observe classes and it was delightful. But if if there's one, even if you don't think you want to be in the arts as your career, I think there's really great positives about it. So I'm, I will forever be grateful that I got to go to the Hamilton Academy of Music. And I hope that you're able to have really wonderful educational theater experiences yourself. If there's anything else that I didn't answer in this video that you have questions about, please leave a comment below and I'll make sure to talk about it. Let me know about your performing arts high school experiences or why you went to one or why you didn't. If you're thinking about going to one, anything else that you'd like to know about it. But at least when I went, the Hamilton Academy of Music was just the greatest.